um, the Scottish Conservatives' estimates on North Sea reserves, and of course I should have said the Scottish Government's apologies for that. Now, joining us from Aberdeen is Kenny Anderson from Business for Scotland, and here in the studio is Labour's Shadow Energy Minister, Tom Greatrix. Um, thank you both for joining us this evening. Uh, Kenny Anderson, how much are these comments from a very respected figure in the industry a blow to the Yes campaign? Well, I don't think they're a blow at all. Um, the OBR figures, the Office for uh, Budgetary Responsibility, um, had much, much lower figures than Sir Ian has given. And the Business for Scotland uh, figures, which a lot of people are relying on, have always said between 15 billion and 24 uh, billion barrels. Now, that's a significantly huge um, asset for a, a country starting off to have. The GDP per head for Scotland is identical to the rest of the UK when you exclude oil and gas from the figures. So we can run Scotland as it's been currently run without oil and gas. Oil and gas is just a pure bonus. It's, it's, it's a huge benefit for us going forward. Now, since I was a teenager at school in the early 1970s, um, oil reserves have been consistently undervalued and underestimated and at every election and every constitutional debate we're told okay. it's running out. Now it, it's a finite all resource right. All um, right. but we, we have a huge future. Okay, uh, Tom Greatrix, this isn't a blow because oil is a bonus to the Scottish economy. Well I think everybody who saw what Ian Wood was saying today could see almost a frustration coming through in the way in which the things that he's been saying have been misquoted and misused by people uh, in this debate and I think what he's been very clear about and he says it in his in, in terms in his review that he did for the government is that we're talking about a largely mature basin in the UK continental shelf and that means that costs are higher that means the value from what you can extract is more marginal and that means that some of the issues that he's talked about in terms of the Ford regulation are, are are crucially important and they're important at this very much very time but in relation to the constitutional debate the point is that what Alex Salmond has done over the course of the last uh, year or so and the last few months has made a lot of assertions and assumptions on the basis of 24 billion barrels of oil equivalent being extracted and what Ian Wood is saying very clearly today is that is a complete overestimate and I think when when people hear Ian Wood speaking they should t pay attention to what he's saying because he's, he's someone beyond uh, beyond criticism in terms of his knowledge uh, and experience in the North Sea. Uh, Kenny Anderson, Alex Salmond has made assertions based on the figures that the Scottish Government has in the white paper. Well Professor Kemp who you uh, showed in the clip early on, Professor Howell head of uh, chair of petroleum geology at Aberdeen University have all talked about additional reserves and Sir Ian did point out that he was talking about discovered reserves and exploration is ongoing not helped by George Osborne's intervention in 2011 and more recently in March 2014 so we are just talking about discovered and exploration is still going on so the, the, the potential is there now the other thing that Sir Ian Wood said and I've got his uh, detailed interview here was that there was extreme pessimism on the side of the people who are from Better Together and from the OBR. And he also did say that yes there was optimism on the other side as well conversely but he's blown apart the OBR's figures completely by stating the 15 billion uh, barrels of oil which is a great resource as I've said already. It's on great tricks. Well, I think the important point to make about the OBR is, and Robert Cho of the OBR said this in terms when he when they revised their figures, is they revised them on the basis um, of looking at the evidence for the previous years. And actually, the OBR uh, overestimated by two billion. The Scottish government overestimated by three billion. And it just makes the point. I but Ken Anderson saying that exploration is still ongoing. Exploration is still ongoing, and some of it's aided by tax changes that actually Alistair Darling made in terms of the introduction of marginal field allowances. Um, but the, the exploration is happening in marginal places, and people talk about west of Shetland and there may well be significant potential there but just as much as people talk about one field there's there have been difficulties in other fields as well because we're talking about very deep water and we're talking about challenging climatic conditions all of which highlight the fact that uh, overall oil revenues are volatile because the prices cannot be controlled and we're talking about by definition a declining and diminishing resource so we have to take great care in how much we predicate our economic activity on those revenues and that's something which I'm afraid Alex Salmond and the Yes campaign certainly haven't done over the past year or so. They've made very exaggerated claims, they've used assumption upon assertion upon exaggeration to try to make their sums add up and they just don't add up and that's the frustration that I think you've come through from Ian Wood's comments today. Kenny Anderson, according to Tom, the sums don't add up. Well, 
oil and gas makes up about between 15 and 18 percent of the Scottish economy. So we've got a strong economy and as I've already said, uh, oil is a huge bonus. The, the, the truth of the matter is the figures stack up for Scotland. We're still exploring for oil. Um, it's always been undervalued at every step of the way and, and w we are in a position also where we're now exporting technology from the oil industry. It reached it breached the 10 billion mark of exports last year and that's a growing field. What we need to do is create a platform to diversify the Scottish economy and strengthen it okay. and that's what's been sadly missing from a Westminster government that changes oh, energy oh. minister every six months okay. and just doesn't allow the industry to Tom, be nurtured and sustained the way it should Tom, be. Tom, very briefly, Serene Wood has one opinion. The Yes mm. campaign cites experts themselves who, yeah, who and, disagree and with Serene. And, well, I don't necessarily disagree, and, and Professor Kemp is a good example, actually, when he was talking about uh, ingenuity. There does need to be ingenuity, but that means that the cost base is more expensive. So when Alexander and the Yes campaign talk about 1.5 trillion, they're talking about the value. The cost of extracting that oil can be pretty significant and the Treasury estimates up to a billion pounds. So, you know, you've got to look at okay. both sides of that ledger. Okay. Thank you both for joining us this evening. Thank you. Now, Thank you. on Monday's Minister...